Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I hope you're all doing really well today. I am so excited to finally be back to share a spring sewing project with you guys. I've finally gotten started on my spring sewing and I have a finished project to share with you today. Today I'm going to be making this blouse. It might be a little bit hard to see here actually just on the hanger, but I love how this turned out. It has a sweetheart neckline here in the front and it buttons in the front. It's a cropped top and then has this little ruffle detail at the hemline. There are elbow length sleeves with a cuff and some gathers, and then the back has paneling, which is really nice for the fit. I love the fabric on this as well, and I did these little covered buttons up the front, which I think turned out so, so cute. The fabric is from Rifle Paper Company. It is one of their cotton and linen canvas blends, and I think it worked so well for a structured piece like this. And then the pattern that I used for this project is this one from McCall's. This is number, let's see, 8181. I used this to make a shirt last spring which I will link to in a card so you can see how I used that pattern for that project but for this project I mostly used the pieces from view B but I used the sleeves from view A and I really love how it came together so let's go ahead and jump in and let me show you how I made this shirt so to get started with this project, I'm using two yards of this beautiful cotton and linen fabric from Rifle Paper Company. This does also come in quilting cotton if you're looking for something more lightweight. And then for the pattern, I'm using McCall's number 8181, mostly the pieces from view B, but the sleeves from view A. Now I've gone ahead and cut out all of my pattern pieces. I have the two sleeve pieces with the sleeve band or cuff, and then the ruffle pieces for the hem. There are two for the front and one for the back. Then for the back of the shirt, there's a center back panel and two side panels. And then for the front, there are two center front panels and two side panels because it will button up the front. I've also cut out all of the bodice pieces twice for a lining. And then the only alteration I made to this pattern was to raise the front neckline by about an inch on the center front panels. So with everything cut out, it's time to get started on the sewing process. And the first thing I'm going to do is to assemble all of the front and back panels. So working here with the front pieces, I'm going to go ahead and pin the center front piece to the side piece along that front seam. And I'm just going to start at the bottom because I did raise my neckline a little bit in the front and I want to make sure that everything is properly aligned. And then I'm just going to pin this in place and sew this down with a 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance. Because I am lining this Shirt. I don't need to worry about any seam finishes yet, so I'm just going to go ahead and pin my panels together on both of the front sections. Now I can repeat this process for the back sections as well. The only difference here is that we are working with one center piece instead of this being split down the middle like in the front. So I'm going to pin both of the sides to the center back piece. And now I can take all of these pieces to the sewing machine and sew these seams with a 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance. Because my fabric is quite thick, I'm going to go ahead and trim these seams to about half of the seam allowance, and then I'll press the seams to one side.
So now with the front and back panels assembled, I can go ahead and sew the shoulder and side seams. So I'm going to start by pinning the front pieces to the back with the right sides together along the shoulders and the side seams. And then I'll just sew all of these seams down with a 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance. And again, because this is lined, I don't have to worry about any seam finishes yet. Now I can go ahead and trim these seams and then I'm going to press all of these seams open. I've repeated all of these steps with the lining pieces of the bodice, and now I can go ahead and attach the lining to the outside of the shirt. So to do this, I'm going to line these up with the right sides together all along the outside edge. So where this buttons in the front and the neckline is where this will be joined together. I'm just going to align this and pin it in place, and then I'll sew all the way around this edge with a 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance. After sewing this seam, I decided to trim the seam allowance and then to understitch the neckline. I'm not going to go over understitching in detail here, but it does really help to keep the lining turned towards the inside of a garment. And I also used my scissors just to clip into the seam allowance where there were corners on the neckline to help that sweetheart neckline really stand out nicely. So that's the main construction on the bodice, and now I could move on to making the sleeves. These sleeves are pretty simple. All I need to do to start is run two rows of gathering stitches along the top of the sleeve between the markings, and then also along the bottom of the sleeve, making sure to leave enough space to have a side seam on the sleeve here. And then once I've done that, I'm going to go ahead and sew the side seam with a 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance and use my serger to finish that edge. And I'm just going to do all of this at one time. I'm also going to take the cuff over to the sewing machine and sew the side seam on the cuff as well so that everything is ready to assemble. This is a really quick seam and it's a 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance as well. Just a quick note, as I'm sewing the side seam on the sleeve, I'm making sure that my gathering threads are not getting caught in my stitching because I want those to be easy to access when I go back to gather the bottom of the sleeve later. So 
So now I can add the cuff to the bottom of the sleeve, but first I want to go ahead and gather the bottom of the sleeve so that it fits to the cuff. So I'm just going to pull on my gathering threads and adjust these to be nice and even and also to match to the size of the cuff. Now with the right sides together, I'm going to align the side seam of the cuff to the side seam of the sleeve and then pin all the way around this, making sure to adjust those gathers to evenly fit to the cuff. Then I can sew all the way around this with a 5 of an inch seam allowance. So now I can go ahead and press this seam with the seam allowance facing down, and then I'm going to fold the lower edge of the cuff up about 5 eighths of an inch here and press that in place. So now I can take that folded edge and then use this as my new fabric edge and fold the cuff towards the inside of the sleeve, making sure to encase that seam allowance in this folded edge. Then when I top stitch on the outside, everything will be really neat and clean in the inside. So I'm just going to pin all the way around this, making sure that all those raw edges are encased in the cuff. can see what the outside looks like those gathering threads will be removed later and here's the inside all of that raw edge is concealed underneath the cuff so now I'm just going to top stitch all the way around this edge So now the sleeve is ready to attach to the shirt. So first I'm going to pull my shoulder gather threads here to adjust these to be nice and even, and then I can pin the sleeve in place. I'm going to align the side seam of the sleeve to the side seam of the shirt, and I am working with both layers of the shirt here, the outside and the lining. I'll be sewing through all three layers of fabric when I sew the sleeve in place. I like to start by pinning at the side seam and then I can adjust this to be nice and even in the armhole and pin all the way around. Then I'll sew this in place with a 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance and I'll use the serger to finish the edge. repeated all of those steps for the other sleeve and then I could move on to the hem ruffle. So the first thing I'm going to do is attach all three ruffle pieces together. There are two for the front and one for the back. So I'm just going to line all three pieces up along the side seams and then sew these down with a 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance. Thank you. 
Next, I want to create a clean edge on either end of the ruffle piece. So I'm going to fold this together with the right sides together and pin along each short edge. Then I'll sew these edges in place with a 5 8 of an inch seam allowance and then turn everything towards the right side. I can add gathering stitches to the top of this ruffle. I originally put two rows of gathering stitches in, but then I found when I came back to pull up the gathering threads that the fabric was a little bit too thick with the seams and my threads broke. So I decided just to go with one gathering thread in the end. And here you can see me pulling up those gathering threads to create a nice ruffle. Then once I have gathered my ruffle, I'm ready to pin it to the bottom of the shirt. So I'm just going to work with the outer layer of fabric here on the shirt and then with the right sides together, I'm going to pin the ruffle to this edge. I'm doing my best to make sure that the front edges are really aligned neatly here so that everything looks nice and even once it's all turned to the right side. And then I'm going to sew this seam in place with a 5 8 of an inch seam allowance. Once again, as I'm sewing the ruffle on, I'm only working with the outside layer of the bodice and making sure to keep the lining free. We will deal with that in just a minute. As I was sewing this project, there was quite the rainstorm going on. So here's a little bit of rain ASMR. So now let's make sure that that lining looks nice and neat on the inside. All I'm going to do here is fold the lining under 5 8 of an inch and pin this in place over that seam allowance that we just sewed. I would normally press this down, but because of the thickness of this fabric, I decided just to do that after I sewed it. It just seemed easier to work with. So I'm pinning this in place, making sure to cover that edge, and then I'm going to top stitch on the waistline on the outside of the shirt. And then finally, the last step to making this project is to add the buttons and buttonholes. So I'm going to go ahead and transfer over my buttonhole markings from the pattern piece, and then I'll use my sewing machine to create my buttonholes. For this project, I decided to make some covered buttons. So I'm just checking the arrangement of these and making sure that the print looks good where they're arranged. I think they turned out so cute. I'm going to open out the buttonholes using some small scissors, and then I can transfer over the markings for the button placement. Then all I have to do is sew on the buttons by hand, and this project was done. And here 
is a look at how the final blouse turned out. I absolutely love this piece and I think it is the perfect addition to my wardrobe for the spring months. I've been really wanting to add a few more just easy to wear spring tops and this is the perfect thing for me. So I'm really happy with how it turned out. I think one of my favorite things about this project is the color scheme of the fabric. I just think it's so perfect for this time of year. And I love how this looks with white jeans as well. So I'm really looking forward to wearing this one over the spring months. And I just think it is really, really cute. So I hope you guys enjoyed seeing how it came together. Thank you guys so much for watching and spending your time here on my channel today. I will be back very soon with some new spring projects. I've been working a little bit to try and figure out a better system for how I can film videos and post them a little bit more consistently, hence the long break before posting now. So I hope you guys understand. I'm sorry about that. I will try my best to get into a consistent schedule soon. Thank you so much for watching and spending your time here on my channel today. If you are new around here and have not yet subscribed, you can go ahead and subscribe by clicking the red button down below and that will allow you to stay tuned for my future sewing videos. I would really appreciate it. And we are inching our way closer to 40,000 subscribers, which is crazy. So thank you guys so, so much for that. It really means a lot to me. I'm going to go ahead and leave it here for today and I will talk to you guys very soon in a new video. Bye.